Hello everyone and welcome to this session on entrepreneurship, business and management. Let us begin from Stone Age, the evolution of human to the current 5G. As we have recently known, the launch of 5G has taken place. What has changed? The innovations have helped us live a better and happy life. The change has taken place in the way we live. The change has taken place in the way we execute things. How has that been able to achieve? We have been able to achieve that because of the innovations. The innovation can be in any idea or product or service or process. It simply means introducing something new. What does entrepreneurs do? They look forward for problems in the system or they look forward for providing an enhanced service to the existing problems and they try to find an innovative solution to it. We can see that we have Ola for shared ride. For all those people visiting other cities or for the local travel also who could not afford their personal vehicles, Ola has come there for a savior. We have smartwatches, which keeps the record of our fitness. This became especially important after the COVID. Now we can see that how everybody has replaced their regular watches with smartwatch. So what are entrepreneurs doing here? They're just trying to find an enhanced solution with their innovative thought to the existing problems. So who are these magical people? They are nobody else, but they are known as entrepreneurs. They have great ideas and they convert those great ideas into business opportunity by undertaking lots and lots of risk. They risk their money, their time, their energy, their reputation. They add tangible value to the innovation so that the people around can use those products or services. They set up the business on the opportunity identified from the environment and convert it into a profitable venture. To do this, they have to manage the initial capital themselves to start the enterprise of their own. So we have understood that to be an entrepreneur, you need to have a perfect balance of the operational competencies. That means that you should be able to execute the organization, run it well, manage it well. The process of entrepreneurship has to be excellent. And then you need to have entrepreneurial competencies also. That means you need to have the skills of a manager and of a leader along with that of an entrepreneur. So we can see that anybody can be an entrepreneur, but a layman will say that I do not know how to become an entrepreneur. I do not understand the word entrepreneur and what is the process involved. The government nowadays is ensuring that the subject entrepreneurship is being read by almost every student in the country. It is said that an idea can change your life. Do you have an idea which you think should be executed and materialized? Do you idolize somebody? Do you think that you also have that in you and the passion to change the world? If yes, maybe you are the next Kiran Madhumdar Shah who will make India proud. With this, I end the session on entrepreneurship, management and business. And I'm sure after this, seeing this session, many of you will be inspired to be an entrepreneur. Good luck and thank you. Greetings everyone. Welcome to the season two of Lamartney Careers Fair. Today we will be interviewing an eminent personality in the field of business entrepreneurship and management to learn more about this career. Mr. Sanjeev Bichandani, who is an Indian businessman and founder and executive vice chairman of InfoEdge, which owns Nokri.com, a job portal, as well as the co-founder of Ashoka University. He was given the Padma Shri Award in 2021, which is the fourth highest civilian award in India. He attended St. Columbus School, Delhi and finished schooling from there in 1981. Thereafter, he obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree in Economics from St. Stephen's College, Delhi in 1984. He completed his MBA from IIM Ahmedabad in 1989. He is ranked 68th in the Forbes India Rich List 2020, with a net worth of $2.1 billion. Mr. Sanjeev founded InfoEdge in 1995. In 1997, he set up Nokri.com and later called Rangel.in. Nokri.com was reported as being India's largest web-based employment website in 2005. Building up the website business, InfoWatch later launched other classified sites like 99acres.com in real estate, Jeevan Sathi in matrimony, and Shiksha.com in education. He is also an astute investor, having invested in unicorns like Policy Bazaar and Zomato. We are very sure that you're going to learn a lot about the different. We are very sure that you're going to learn all the different facets that involve business entrepreneurship and management from this podcast. Thank you, sir, for coming here. And also, I would request all the viewers of this particular podcast to surely make notes of whatever sir is going to explain to us throughout the course of this session. And with that, sir, our first question to you is acknowledging the fact that you are a seasoned and renowned businessman. 
what do you think are the fundamentals of business and entrepreneurship which have aspiring business person should you know encompass while they move ahead in pursuing the career well look uh, almost all uh, companies businesses enterprises they are first of all people's businesses whether the people are your customers the people are your investors the people are your co-founders or your uh, colleagues and employees so first of all you have to be very very good with people you have to be able to create trust across the tables you have to be the kind of person who people want to work with whether they are your co-founders or your colleagues or your employees you have to be the kind of person whom people your investors trust and want to invest behind you have to be the kind of person especially if you're in a b2b space uh, you have to be the kind of person whom people want to do, do business with your customers uh, and so first quality is to be a good people's person i think the second quality is no company no business no career is uh, built without a lot of hard work so you've got to commit your time your energy total commitment 100% commitment to doing what it is you want to do the third is the business idea right uh, what is the business idea you are pursuing or want to pursue uh, is it solving a customer's or a prospective customer's unsolved problem uh, is it something people will pay you money for and will that money they pay you will it be more than your cost and then you get down to execution and execution is really very very important so these are four or five broad buckets i would say of course there are 500 things you have to do but i would classify them into these four or five broad important buckets thank you so much for your answer sir before we uh, discuss the essentials of business i'd like to ask you and this is a question that a lot of people in our school have uh, put in forward so being an alumnus of iim ahmedabad what do you think are the advantages of having a formal business degree rather than having no formal education uh, i think what a good formal education does it compresses knowledge uh, you know into two years which otherwise you may have taken 20 years to acquire right uh, it also gives you uh, you know it opens certain doors for you if you got a good brand name like lamartine is a good brand right so if you're from lamartine people automatically assume that you're of a certain caliber right uh, likewise if you're from a good business school enough people whether your prospective employers or your investors or your customers or your colleagues will make certain assumptions about you right that you are of a certain caliber and then that will help you along the way right and finally you know what it does do is it gives you a network a network of your classmates who you know 20 30 years later will be in places that count and they'll be able to help you and you will be on the phone and talk to them uh, and get stuff done right so a lot of the grunt work where you don't know somebody or making a sales call for the first time uh, you know you have to make three or five sales calls to establish your credentials that gets compressed to two calls or one calls so network and knowledge uh, you know these are two very important things uh, right and of course the brand thank you so much sir for that answer um sir acknowledging the fact that you found founded the nokia.com in the year 1997 which is now india's largest web based employment site um what did you feel was missing in the indian employment sector which led you to create this corporation along with that what did you do you think as of now which you would like to move ahead uh, to with make your business in a much better manner right now see uh, when we launched 1997 it was just a small simple idea there were only 14000 internet accounts in the country what 14000 14 Right, so we had no idea at that time how big the internet would become, uh, how many people it would reach, and how large and valuable this company would become. We were simply doing a small thing because it seemed to make sense at a small level, right? And uh, so I got the idea of Nokri because I used to observe my colleagues in my last job uh, around eight, nine, ninety. That was my last job um, working for a large corporation, and I used to observe that all my colleagues would read the office copy of Business India from the back when they saw it, you know, when it came to office. because in those days there were 35 to 40 pages of appointment ads at the back of business india it was a number one appointment ad medium uh, for professional managers and i got i observed this and i found it strange that you know people are reading appointment ads before they read the articles it tells me that people are very interested in job information right uh, even though they are not looking for a job because my colleagues were happy in jobs they were quite they were not looking for a job but still they would look at the job ads so people seem hungry for information about jobs The other thing I observed was that um, every week, two or three different headhunters would call up and talk to one or two of my colleagues, and try and get them interested in in a job, in in some other company. And I realized by listening to the conversation on the side of the phone that these jobs are not advertised, and it, it, so therefore I figured there were hundreds, maybe thousands of headhunters out there uh, dealing with tens of thousands of companies who are giving them jobs to fill up, and these jobs are not advertised. So I figured there's a very large sort of fragmented database of jobs out there. which is not available in print so if somebody were to aggregate it and put it in one place uh, it would be a very useful product people would want to see it now this is 1990 there was no internet so i didn't know what to do with this observation but in 1996 when i saw the internet for the first time i said to myself let's just take all job ads from newspapers and magazines 
and put them all in one place on the internet and see what happens. And we did that every week. We twice a week we update the site with new jobs, and we found that traffic would come. Once traffic began to come, we went to companies and said that, "Listen, you know, we know you don't advertise most of your jobs. You fill them up through headhunters or through your, you know, own HR department. So why don't you give us those jobs? We are charging a very low fee, uh, and we list the jobs on the website. And sure enough, some revenue, some small sales, some jobs began to come in. And we over time migrated to all paid jobs. And so in the first year, we did a revenue of two and a half lakhs, two point three five lakhs only. Second year, we did we did fourteen lakhs." Or 18 lakhs, I think 18 lakhs. If I'm not wrong, right? And that's how this company started. That's how this business started. Nokri, very small, small idea, uh, a customer insight that people are interested in jobs. So just get the jobs and put them up, and, and the traffic will come. And that's what happened. Thank you so much, sir, for your answer. From what I can extract from what you just said right now, was that you uh, was that you found a gap that was there that existed in the marketplace, and then uh, what you did was you filled that gap, and that is, I think, what most businesses do, or what most new startups or unicorn, especially unicorn startups do. Um, you can take names of multiple uh, multiple startups, multiple organizations, or multinational companies which have uh, filled the basic gap that exists in the marketplace. So for people uh, who may not have that entrepreneurial uh, mindset to actually analyze what's missing, how can they learn uh, this uh, this skill to actually evaluate what is missing in the consumer market and then create a service or uh, the goods which actually the consumers would want to use that's correct you know i mean it's very important that customers want what is it you're trying to sell if the customers don't want it then you have to really struggle hard to make a sale happen if you solve an unsolved problem the customer will buy you don't have to sell and if you're in a situation where the customer is buying without you having to sell you're in a very good place because you can charge your price you can get your terms of payment uh you can get make your margins right uh as opposed to when you have to push hard to sell that's it for that uh, i'd also like to know more about the fact that from your investments in companies like policy bazaar and zomato it is clear that you have an eye for up and coming companies and business sectors which have the potential to grow so what do you think are the sectors which will grow exponentially in the next 10 to 12 uh, in the next 10 to 20 years so we don't do it top down we do it bottom up right we invested in policy bazaar in 2008 and in zomato in 2010 when we first went in now at in 2008 if you told me you know why don't you do an insurance comparison website or invest in one uh, you know i would have said are you crazy uh, you know because no such website existed right uh, likewise if somebody had told me that listen why don't you invest in restaurant listing sites in 2010 you would have just dismissed it that it doesn't make sense so we do bottom up we meet young entrepreneurs uh, who are starting out and we if if, if they're good people And what they're doing makes sense to us. We might back them. So we do it bottom up, not top down. So I don't have any preconceived notions of sectors. I do have preconceived notions, however, of uh, you know uh, what's a good idea when I see one, and uh, who's a good entrepreneur when I see when I see one. So what do you think is a good idea or a good entrepreneur from what your evaluation is when you talk to a person when you want to invest in their company? What are the things that you that actually help you understand that will this person or this company's uh, venture be successful or not? What are the essential characteristics or the traits uh, that they might have which you look out for? Well, um, I think the first thing we look at is if the product has been launched already, uh, is it getting natural traction? I mean, traffic is coming, downloads are happening, the traffic and downloads are growing without spending on advertising. Now, if that is happening, it tells me that maybe they are onto something. Customer apne abara hai. Unko aate karne zaroor nahi padti. It means they are doing something people are finding useful, and they're coming back again and again, and they're telling their friends about it. And that's how more and more people are coming. That's the first thing. Uh, or in the case of Policy Bazaar, we invested before the website was launched. There, what convinced us was, uh, you know, I sat with the Ashish Dhaya, the founder, across the table. And he told me, "I'm willing to bet you're paying 60 percent higher for your insurance than you need to car insurance." And I said, "Don't be daft. You know, I've bought uh, the car insurance from the dealer when I bought the car, and I renew it every year. And it's a public sector insurance company. I'm, it's a standard insurance policy, standard price, standard company. What are you talking?" He says, "Give me your details." So I gave him my car details, mileage, uh, you know, uh, all of that, everything. He input into one database, query database, and he came back with eight quotes. And sure enough, the lowest quote was 40 percent lower than what I was paying. Now that showed me that this is a compelling value proposition. It's not been launched, right? It's a, so, so the hook, the value proposition, natural direction. The first thing we look at. Right? The second thing, obviously, is the team. How good is the team? Are they passionate? Are they committed? Will they stay the course? Can they, you know, typically in India to make a business, maybe it takes ten years, fifteen years, twenty years. Can they stay the course? Will they stay the course? Are they committed enough? You're making judgment calls. 
five years out, when he, this person who's 28 years old today, if he has 500 employees, will you even manage them? Handle them? He's the kind of person who will be people will want to work with. Is he trustworthy? Can he stand in front of other investors and attract capital in further rounds after us? Right? But, you know, and so on. So uh, the big calls are around the idea on early traction and the people. Uh, we don't look at market size that much because you know when uh, when new technology uh, you know sort of comes in very often markets are created and markets are transformed. And so we don't, uh, we, we will not reject uh, a deal just because the market size looks small today. The question is where can it be tomorrow? Right, so we're taking a bet on the future. Well, like, sir, thank you so much for that enthused answer. So based on whatever you mentioned, um, there was a lot of times wherein we had team being mentioned. So sir, acknowledging the fact that how important is it to be a team leader, so can you please explain the youth who will be listening to this podcast as to what makes you a what, what makes a good team and then how do you become a good leader of that team? Well, uh, I think first of all, you have to be a good team player before you become a team leader. Right? So I would imagine up two or three co-founder. It's possible you are solo co-founder, solo founder. But in many, many companies, there are two or three founders. So how do they gel as a unit? Now, there may be one CEO, right? For whatever reason, he may have put in more money, he may have been there first, gathered joint data, he may be older, he may be more senior, whatever reason, there will be one CEO, usually. Uh, but there are very many teams we've backed where there's no CEO. They are all three are equal, all two are equal, both are equal, right? Uh, so we see how well they gel together as a team. How, you know, and how do they work together? Uh, do they respect each other? Now, leaders will emerge after that. So, a team leader fundamentally has to be a very, very decent, honest person who is capable of building trust across the table. Right? Uh, people have to believe in you. They should have to want to work with you. You have to be the personal magnet for talent. Okay? Uh, and they must believe in what you're doing. So you're a good salesman. You've sold them your vision. Okay? And in the beginning, you may not have money. They have to be willing to work for you with very little money or no money and just maybe some equity. Because they believe in a future that you are outlining. Uh, I remember uh, we couldn't pay salaries for the first two, three years of launching Nokri uh, to the senior people. So we paid very low salaries and I gave a percentage of uh, the company and a percentage of sales. Okay, And people were happy to work because they believe in the future. Okay, sir. Uh, noted. Although uh, a lot of times new ventures and new companies are not able to pay their employees or their core team, right? Of course, because they don't have that much money yet. So uh, how should a person go about this process without having a lot of funding? How should they run their company and make sure that their employees are happy? So the employee retention rate is also higher. So I'll tell you, first of all, you should give enough equity and ESOP to people so that they have a share in the future, an upside in the future, right? Then, I mean, if you have some money, if you don't have any money, then you better produce something that the customers pay you for. So, customer up there. So, the customer's money, I always say, is better than the investor's money. So, if you have a customer, it means your product is useful. So, you've done something good that people require. That, and if you have a customer, then the investor will come. Because investors love to invest in businesses that are getting customers. So, focus on the customer, try and do something and make something that the customer pays you for. Right? Uh, investor money will follow. Okay, noted, sir. Another thing which you mentioned was building trust with your team and then, of course, being um, being a good salesman. So, uh, there are two questions which I have for this. Firstly, uh, of course, build, building trust within your team is essential. Uh, but apart from that, if you want to build your trust as a brand or as a or as a businessman to the outside market, how should a person go about doing that? And then secondly, is um, you mentioned about being a good salesman. Trust also plays a huge factor in the same. So, how do you build trust while also being a good salesperson? Trust is about being honest decent, polite, uh, and making promises that you can keep and keeping the promises that you make. Right? Uh, so if you promise a customer something and you don't deliver, the customer will not trust you next time. If you promise a customer something and you deliver it, right, the customer will trust you. Ugly buddy. He said, I have, used, I have worked with him earlier. He delivered, I'll, I'll give him more business. So trust is about delivering to commitments. Right? That's one big aspect. Other aspect of this telling the truth being sincere, being honest, being humble, being polite. Uh, trust is about seeing the situation from the other person's point of view. You see, uh, you get an employee. Think of what his aspirations are, his or her aspirations. It won't catch up in a situation. Say. And can you somehow ensure that he gets that? So when the company succeeds, he also succeeds. Uh, it cannot be company succeeds, you succeed, but he doesn't succeed. Okay, thank you, sir. I'm really glad that you're able to distill down these things which we think of them. We make them too complex for us. We we make them by we make them complex by ourselves. However, um, you helping us understand that it, it is much more simpler. Thank you for simplifying that, sir. 
And now my question to you, sir, is uh, that your company, InfoEdge, runs a real estate company, 99acres.com. Real estate is something which interests quite a lot of people. However, there aren't many resources which may help us to learn more about it. So could you please elucidate on how someone can get information or get into the real estate sector? 99acres uh, is essentially a listing site. So builders, brokers uh, and landlords list their properties, whether for sale or for rent. right? Uh, and buyers and prospective tenants come and search, even brokers come and search, uh, and they contact the people who list the properties. That's a very, very, in a very simple manner. That's how it works. Think of classified ads in newspapers for real estate. The same thing on the internet, uh, with video, with photographs, with more details, right? with a search, with a very large amount of data. That is 99 acres. Okay, thank you. All right, sir. Thank you so much for that uh, answer. Now, sir, at this point, I would also request you if you would like to mention any part of your story from uh, starting off with your venture in the year 1997 till the year 2022. Any uh, journey which you would like, part of your journey, which you would like to share with us? I think, look, you work one day at a time. You have a big dream. That dream is a fuzzy dream that keeps you going. But you work daily. You work weekly. You work monthly. Right? What do I What is my target now? Right? You obviously manage your costs and you get your revenue and you manage your investors. But I think the greatest quality of an entrepreneur is persistence. If you persist, and if you're personally frugal when you don't have money, right, uh, sooner or later you will succeed. So that's what it, it was for me. Uh, from 1990 to 97, I was an entrepreneur doing 100 small things. 97, we launched Nokri as the 101st small thing. Uh, right place, right time, worked hard, worked smart, got lucky. And in the year 2000, we raised venture capital. But the meltdown happened, and in 2004, we were struggling. So it was 14 years of struggle for me. Uh, before the company broke even, the meltdown was over and went public in 2006. Okay. So, without ke and without persistence, you know, without seeing ups and downs, you know, it's when most companies don't get built. Right? So, great companies are the product of a lifetime's effort for some smart and committed people in the core team. So, I have been at it for 32 years now, since 1990. Right? Uh, you look at and. You look at globally great entrepreneurs, you look at the Google people, they've been at it since 1998. Uh, you look at Bill Gates, he spent a lifetime. So, if you want to do a company, uh, be prepared to spend, to commit your life. Thank you so Tabhi much. Ja ke absolutely, sir. Absolutely. Uh, sir, while you were talking about uh, 99 acres, I sir, real estate is something which interests me quite a lot. Currently, I'm in class 11. However, um, I've I've been very intrigued by the real estate market since uh, the last three, four years when I was in class seven or eight, um, which sounds quite odd, but um, th that has been the case for me. Uh, however, a lot of people want to get into this, perhaps even when they, uh, in, in the starting initial ages of their career or the initial stages of their career. But the problem is that uh, usually a large amount of capital is required to get into this and a considerable network of people is also required. So what can a person do to get into the sector who is pra practically starting from zero? I would say work somewhere else in the real estate sector, learn the ropes elsewhere. The real estate is a complex industry. Right. Uh, if you're talking about making buildings, then you have to get you have to get the land, you have to get uh, government permissions, you have to get the architect's design, you have to there's a lot of capital involved, you have to borrow money, you have to you know do the plan, start the construction, supervise the construction, you have to get customers, you have to collect money, and you have to hope the market stays intact and does not collapse while you're you know you you imagine certain prices and the prices are much lower when you actually came to sell. What risk was that? So I would say it's a good idea to work somewhere in real estate, in a real estate uh, company before trying to venture out on your own. Thank you so much sir, for that answer. Uh, so you also co-founded the Ashoka University, which is now the most renowned liberal arts college in India. So what is the significance of liberal arts with regard to a person who wishes to eventually get into business? So I studied liberal arts in college. Uh, I studied economics. Um, I think uh, the, the thing I found and I think I realized was that in India, the subject you study depends on your marks and depends on your what entrance exams you've cleared. It also depends, see, very many parents, teachers, uh, your friends uh, will try and chase a particular line of study or course of study or a particular college without fully comprehending whether it's right for you, it's what, whether it's what you want to do. Right? So you'll, you'll find that you will study something and then your work has nothing to do with what you studied. And that's a problem in India. It is less of a problem in, let's say, in the US. So we figured that we, if we create a college where 
you study a large number of subjects right and then decide what to major in after you study those subjects it may be more useful because then people will major in what they like and what they're passionate about so at ashoka you do foundation courses which are across maybe four or five or six areas it could be history it could be economics it could be literature it could be mathematics statistics but aap che art course karte ho across several areas after you've done those courses you then decide what you want to major in right it could be economics could be philosophy it could be political science could be anything right and that's the difference between that say so so in india we have inherited the british system which is you choose your subject after class 12 and you just study that subject okay uh, whereas the us system is that you have wits and then major and life is not about one subject life is not in a silo of one subject life is about multi discipline learning and and behavior and therefore we wanted every student to have a multi discipline experience before deciding what to major in and that is what i think is the significance of a place like ashoka truly say truly thank you so much for that so moving uh, slightly away from what we were discussing about business i have a lot of questions about uh, you and your mentality as a whole so so firstly i'd like to know if a person wants to be where you are in your shoes how can a person go ahead with that and start their journey to becoming a renowned and a seasoned businessman uh, especially in a country such as india well i always say dream big because that's the dream will keep you going for dream big but start small because when you start small you make small mistakes the cost of failure is lower you learn as you go okay right? starting small also doesn't take up too much money okay right? so start small you know one customer understand a customer you know i had 5 years industry experience before i became an entrepreneur so maybe you want to work somewhere for a few years so you understand how companies work how markets work how how to sell how to work in an organization right and then you will discover your own path truly say and uh, what you had said previously about perseverance uh, so i think starting from uh, starting small and then going big i think persever- perseverance plays a large part in that so apart from uh, a quality or a virtue such as perseverance what else are the uh, requirements or what else are the key character- characteristics that make a successful person according to you well uh, you do your best and then you also get lucky right uh, and uh, you know if you're very lucky you'll get lucky in 5 years if you're moder- moderately lucky you'll get lucky in 10 years if you're very unlucky you'll get lucky in 15 years and that's where persistence comes in keep persisting till you get lucky now you also have to be very good and hard working uh, but but uh, but you know so therefore keep on improving your skills keep on trying uh, know know your people very well know your customers very well ultimately if you know your customers very well you will know what the customer is looking for what the unsolved problem is and if you solve an unsolved problem you will succeed so do you think you can believe you do you, do you believe that you can make your own luck or is it something that is out of your control so to some extent out of your control but you know a friend of mine told me a very insightful thing you know luck is about being at the right place at the right time and then he went on to tell me that if you are in enough places enough enough of the times sooner or later you will be at the right place at the right time it goes back to persistence wow so all of the things that we've discussed they basically boil down to a couple of characteristics that a person can have which will help them to uh, succeed in this uh, succeed in the in a sector such as business uh, so a couple of question uh, which i had for you uh, some follow up so you talked about scaling going from smaller to bigger um, i have a few questions firstly people who are starting their own business um, a lot of times what holds them back is a lack of funding because they do not have the credentials or the ethos or the credibility uh, how as to how they can get the funding so how can a person um, work firstly with minimum funding and then how can they get more funding and then later on how can they scale that if you work for a few years you may have some savings uh, if you start getting customers right from the beginning the customer will pay you so you get the customer money if, you know maybe you have friends and family who can give you a few lakh rupees when you're starting Uh, because that's what friends and family do they help you right beyond that you can go to angel investors or early stage investors or micro vc funds so there are various ways to get money right uh, but if you're getting customers that's the first way to get money your customers are paying you all right so thank you so much for that answer uh, so based on whatever we've heard so far uh, what are you looking forward to doing in the future and creating in the coming years is there something else which you would like to choose now or is it done? No, I think uh, you know, we are backing a number of other entrepreneurs, uh, and some of them have gone on to do some wonderful things. So I think that will continue. I think obviously the operating businesses we run, Nokri, Nike, Nike, Jeevan Sadi, Shiksha, those will continue. So you know, I would say it's more of the same. So you talked about uh, the fact that you want you were looking forward to backing up more entrepreneurs, uh, which were, which went back to your previous answer where you said that uh, you can approach angel investors uh, to fund your ideas. So how can budding young and budding entrepreneurs find angel investors, perhaps someone like you? 
So look, uh, in Lucknow, for example, there's a chapter of the the Indus Antimo CIE, right? Uh, there are incubators. There's an incubator in IIT Kanpur, right? There would be other incubators around around UP. I think the government of UP has got a good startup policy. Right? So use your networks. Use your networks. Uh, there are angel networks around the country. Indian angel network there. Mumbai angels are there. So there are many many angels now. There are more than six thousand angels in this country who are registered with uh, Let's Venture and Indian Angel Network and other places. So the angel investing culture, I think, is reasonably established in this country right now. There are there are ways to reach them. Okay, right. thank you so much, sir, for that answer. And as much as I don't want this podcast to end because we are able to have a great chat with you along with learning a lot of things from you, that we have come to the last question, which is: Is there any piece of advice which you would like to say to the aspiring business enthusiasts and the budding entrepreneurs? Yeah, I would say give it time. Try and uh, you know, don't be in too much of a hurry. Uh, it's okay. You will get you will get to where you want to go. Uh, you know. Complete your studies. Try and get into a good college. Try and get into a good business school if that's what you want to do, or a good engineering college. Uh, try your hand at something. Work somewhere. Uh, you know, you don't have to be this uh, boy genius who, you know, makes it by twenty-five. It's okay. Thank you so much, sir, for that answer. And with this, we come to the end of the podcast by Amartya Karyasfer. Thank you so much for tuning in, everyone, and thank you so much, sir, for being a part of it. It was a pleasure taking your podcast. Thank you.